Live tonight for Titans Talk on News Channel 5 Plus with Rep. Brian of Titans Radio. I'm Jonathan Hutton. Glad you're with us and you can join us. 615-737-7767 if you'd like to talk Titans football tonight. Your thought process on where they should be headed right now going into the month of December. Back end of the schedule at 2-8. and eight. What do you want to see from this team? What do you want to see from some of the young players? We'll get to David Cobb who made his debut uh, this past week in week 11 against Jacksonville. We'll talk about Mariota and his development. Uh, but you mentioned the, the third down offense. They, they, they worked a lot on that today in practice at St. Thomas Sports Park. Just 5 of 13, Rhett last Thursday night in Jacksonville just the, they put the defense on the field too much they do um, and, and these numbers have looked similar for the last three yeah. or four games it's uh, very I haven't looked at that in a snapshot in the last several games but I would say they're uh, in that mid 30th percentile I would think and that's yeah it's amazing the defense has done what it has done um, and, and staying on the field as long as they well, think, have. Yo, think about the positions they were in. I, I, I said earlier, Jacksonville controlled the majority, or excuse me, the Titans controlled the majority of the game, and it was because the defense was so dominant in the red zone. Yes. Uh, the, the red zone defense was superb on Thursday. But twice, Jacksonville drove to around the 10-yard line, and twice, early on in that game, the Titans held them to field goals. Yeah, Jason Myers kicked chip shots. I mean, yep. they, one of them was 20 yards. So, yeah. And absolutely. due in large part to the play of Brian Arakpo, who has been phenomenal uh, this cur year. <laughs> currently, and he is rising up the charts in terms of what he's doing with franchise numbers. He has the longest consecutive games with a quarterback sack since Javon Kirst did it his rookie year. Uh, we were having seven the, straight games, I think he did it his rookie We were having the debate during uh, one of the commercial breaks today on Midday 180 uh, about which player has meant more to the roster right now, uh, Arakpo or Delaney Walker. And I think it's a great debate to have because you can't really – I mean, you can take Walker out of the – if you took Walker out of the equation on offense, I don't know what they would do with some I, of the injuries they've sustained and the veteran presence that he brings and the consistency week to week. But Arakpo – you know, early in the season over the first couple of weeks, it was, he he was, you, you, you had to account for him, but he was making other players better. Jarrell Casey, Derek Morgan, and while he's still doing that right now, he's also beginning to pile up the stats, too, on his end. He's, oh, yeah. he's cranked it up Those a Those first two or three weeks, it was hits and hurries and quarterback pressures. That's right. He was close. And, so, and something right. that he really cares more about. He says, you know, the this, this sacks, quarterback sacks, to, to quote him, are a sexy stat. <clears throat> he said it's something that you know f fans around the league really follow. And he said, yeah, they're great. But he said, I want to be in the leading column in tackles and hits and hurries and pressures. And he takes a lot of pride in his run defense. Oh, yeah. Um, his, his run defense is, is pretty good. And he wants to be known as more of the, the complete player than just known as a pass rusher. Uh, that's one thing in particular he's mentioned to me. But more than that, just the the energy that he brings to that defense. Uh, oh, we saw him go down a couple of times, and you better believe everybody, the Titans fans were worried about the injury. But at first, I, he, he was scared. It was just a scare with the pectoral injury. And, and then later he had the wind knocked out of him late in the, in the second half. Uh, but I, you, you caught your breath a little bit because Without you know what he meant to the defense there and you better believe the coaches were thinking the same thing because you lose him you, you lose a lot defensively you, you want to talk to one person who's glad Brian Arakbo's here talk to Derek Morgan <laughs> yeah I mean, those yep. guys have played very well off of each other. Derek Morgan has issues of his own. He's got a shoulder injury that is nagging with him now, and he'll be limited probably just to the pass rush like he was last Thursday night unless, you know, things start to lessen in pain for him towards the end and of the And the thing, too, about Arakpo, that the small plays that I've noticed over the this season, that the, the plays that he's made, I remember a play last year in Baltimore where they ran four set to the edge, and he got the edge on Cam, Cameron Wembley, and Wembley couldn't catch up with him, and four set ended up running in for a, like a 10-yard touchdown. Mm -hmm. um, there was a similar play with Arakpo this week in Jacksonville with a much younger player, 
trying to get to the edge, and Arakpo read it perfectly, and the, the angles were, were perfect. That, that's, that's the small, subtle difference that Arakpo brings to this defense. Seven quarterback sacks, and I think five in his last four games. He's, uh, he's doing it. He's well worth the, uh, the acquisition uh, and, and his contract coming here, and that's what you'd hoped and what they'd banked on him becoming after being injured the last couple of years in Washington. And uh, to your argument on your show today, I mean, Delaney Walker, my goodness, this guy. He, he's having a Pro Bowl season, and wow. he's not going to get the recognition because of the team's record. Um, but when you when you compare his numbers to where they were last year, and he, he was very good last year, he would have had, a, I think, close to a 1,000-yard season. Well, he's already a close to a 1,000-yard season. Maybe a 1,000-yard season. If he doesn't get hurt for that one game, uh, he's going over that that 1,000 yard mark as a receiver. There, the, I don't have the year. stat in front of me, but there is a stat right now where he is third in the NFL in yardage uh, and catches from 2014 to 2015, two places behind Gronkowski. And this is a guy that should be in the Pro Bowl this year, mm -hmm. and and maybe if Gronkowski's in the Super Bowl and he has to take a pass there, that he comes in as a first first alternate because you still have Tyler Eifert in uh, in Cincinnati that's that's burning it up. Well, but, and they're doing this league wide thing now, where you vote, uh, you, you vote collectively. Yes. At NFL.com for all the tight ends, and I think you can pick four, and then you have like Deion Sanders and I don't know. Who else? Uh, Jerry Rice probably. Right, they draft that their will teams. draft these tight right. ends, not right. not necessarily based on conference, but based on whenever they want to select them. So uh, there, there's there's a lot of the the fan votes uh, affect this, but you would think Gronkowski and and Eifert especially uh, would would get the recognition over Delaney, and that's not that's not downing Delaney. I think that's just fans getting the national exposure of the teams that are playing well right hey, now. Usually, I and mean, you look in the years. Uh, years ago when the Titans were in the playoffs each year, there was multiple times they had seven, eight, nine Pro Bowlers. It, it, it goes with the bandwagon type things and the record that it's reflected. But you look at Delaney Walker's numbers right now, he has 53 catches for 617 yards and three touchdowns. And six games to play. To put that in perspective, and you're, you just put the tag on there for me to set, set this up. When you go back and look at Frank Wycheck's best years with Steve McNair, Steve McNair's security blanket. He's already, that's the kind of year he would have had for the entire season. <laughs> I mean, you're right. Uh, Delaney Walker is a, a very special talent and is really fast for a guy that's nearly 250 pounds. 615 737 7767, our number. You can tweet us at Titans Radio at Midday 180. Um, is it at R. Brian, Tennessee? Yeah, uh, at Rhett B. Tennessee. Rhett B. Tennessee. I yep. got the initials. That's all right. Backed up there, but um, check us out on Twitter again. At Titans Radio is where you can follow us. There, we'll read some of your comments on the air. Uh, Malarkey said they're flying around today. You mentioned you, you felt like they were, had recharged the batteries mm -hmm. a little bit. Do Do you think this team is throwing in the towel at two and eight? A coaching you change. Did you get the sit? Uh, there, there was an energy in New Orleans in the overtime victory. Oh, yeah. That was just two weeks ago, by the way. Sure. They certainly played very hard against Jacksonville. No one can question the fact that they're giving their best effort, I think. I, I certainly get that feeling being on the sideline. Uh, I, I wonder, can, can they sustain this? despite not winning games. Well, the guy that we just mentioned, two, those two guys we just mentioned in Delaney Walker and Brian Arakpo, they won't quit. Um, but you noticed it at Delaney's locker today, um, not the same usual pep in his step. Now, he's kind of a laid-back guy anyway, mm -hmm. but uh, I think someone in the media actually asked him, hey, uh, how is this affecting you? you? You came from a program with the 49ers that was constantly building and, and building to something special and ended up playing in a Super Bowl in New Orleans. You know, have you gotten used to these kinds of things and, and losing the games and the stretches that you have? And you can see that it's starting to wear on a guy like that. But I think as long as there's leadership from guys like him and Brian Arakpo, um, I don't think they'll let their teammates uh, fold up the tent. Um, it's one of those things where I guess it kind of remains to be seen, though. We're going to have to see what happens. Um, I think if, you'd, uh, if they'd have won the game 
last Thursday in Jacksonville, I think you would see a little more spark than what you do now. And it is. I mean, let's face it, it's hard um, to go through what they've been through. You go through a coaching change midseason, and, um, you know, I know that you'll have callers and you'll have folks saying, well, they're big boys, they make a lot of money, and they sure. do. But you still want to be competitive. You still want to win the game. You still want to compete. Looking at the, the competition right now in the division, Titans at 2-8, and eight, Jacksonville at 4-6, and six, and now Houston and Indy both 5-5 five and five as we head towards the backstretch. Teams want to be final five to six weeks making a push for the postseason as they go into the fourth month of the season. Uh, what, what's three of these four teams are doing that right now. Well, and, and what's hurtful, kind of the double-edged sword for the Titans, is this. They had a rare opportunity in the first part of the schedule where they had four consecutive home games. You don't get that very often. That's the first time that's happened to the franchise. They were the Houston Oilers the last time that happened, 25 years ago. And you don't win any of those games. Um, that was a backbreaker. You're getting into the hard part of your schedule. You have a trip to New York to play the Jets. You have a trip to New England to pay the, play the Patriots. You still have three division games and whereas you look like Jack you look at Jacksonville Jacksonville this Sunday is hosting the two and eight San Diego Chargers that can't get a run game going with rookie Melvin Gordon um, and so some of these guys are getting their break and then you look at Indy I mean they're three and oh without their starting quarterback now we know what Matt Hasselbeck's capable of and the guy's 40 years old but that's impressive and he's got a more difficult schedule coming up over the next two weeks where you find out if they're for real or not. Uh, some stiffer competition maybe than, than the direction that, uh, that the Falcons were headed in, where they're trending down. Uh, Houston at 5-5, five and five, they've got quarterback issues of their own, but their defense is playing like the Texans' defense we expected to see out of the gate, where they're just a not, they're not allowing any points. All of a sudden, J.J. Dominant. Watt is awake. And that's dangerous. And if they can ever get Jadavian Clowney out there with him, wow, look at I saw, I see, you mentioned what's scary about that. I saw a story, maybe in John McClain who told us this, that Watt has been working with Clowney on the swim move, the technique that Watt uses perfectly. And if Clowney were to actually absorb some of the things that J.J. Watt will teach him. And stay on the field healthy. That's I don't know who I like division. in the division right now because Jacksonville's not out of it. No, it's they're, a toss-up right now. They're it not really out of is. it, and, and Houston and Indy can go one way or the other. Um, the Titans, what, three games back at 2-8, and eight, which is just crazy to think about when you look at the, the overall standings right now. Absolutely. It's, and uh, they still have head-to-head -head matchups with all of them. That's right. Still have uh, uh, hosting Jacksonville and uh, hosting the Houston Texans uh, on December 27th and then at Indy on January 3rd of 2016. One of the cool things, too, uh, seeing Matt Hasselbeck have success because he was very emotional after the win at Houston. That was a Thursday night game, I believe, where he was really sick. Yeah, he had a viral infection. It was, he was very in the hospital. Ill. Yes, a uh, couple days after that. In the hospital there, and they ended up playing him because Andrew Luck couldn't go. Um, and he was, was very emotional after the game. And it was because, uh, not only because he was very sick and he, he won a, a tough game on the road, and he didn't get hit by J.J. Watt, which is important. <laughs> um, I, I felt like he walked off the field that, that day at NRG Stadium thinking, you know what, I, I probably just started my final game because we've got a long weekend coming up after this Thursday night game. Luck's coming back, and here, here they go for the stretch of the, the, the season run. And he's getting another opportunity on the road yesterday. They win at Atlanta, and he just – the the offense isn't beating itself defensively they're making enough plays to keep their offense in position to score late and win yeah it's uh it's quite impressive what they have been doing as of late and uh, as you can see but it's it's a week to week league things can turn on a dime but i i, I said all that to say this hasselbeck is a great great guy and wish him nothing but success because he's one of them the more genuine players I've met inside the Titans locker room in the two years he was here in Nashville. So uh, great to see good things from him and, and the fact Absolutely. that he's 40 years old and having success yeah. is just unbelievable. Absolutely. David is on line one. We welcome him in to Titans Talk here on News Channel 5 Plus. David, how are you? Hey, Jonathan. Hey, good evening. Hey. Hey, I said this three years ago. Okay. 
Scientists have done very little since, you know, since McNair and everything. I just believe their glory years are over because one thing, they've got too many holes to fill every year. And so far, I've been right, and, you know, since the, they were in the Super Bowl. Yeah, they were in the playoffs a couple of years and everything. But since then, they've done absolutely nothing. And, I, you know, unless I see them, I just don't see it being turned around. When did it turn for you? You said three years ago you said that. What made you decide then that that was the time to throw just, in the towel? Well, you, you know, you, they went three years where they won, what, three games, four games, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they just, they, they haven't done anything since, okay, Bullock, since Bullock left, since, you know, Eddie George, he retired. You know, what happened to Steve and everything. Right. But ever since then, they, it's the same old thing. I mean, since, you know, since uh, the coach left and went to St. Louis, look what they've done. They've done absolutely nothing. It's better off going to see a Vanderbilt game. So, hey, y'all have a great night. All right, David. Appreciate it. Uh, bye -bye. Uh, Anchor down. I'd like to make a comment here on, on David's call. And, and I can understand his frustration. And, and you know what? Uh, they've had a 13-3 and three season uh, that last couple of years before Jeff Fisher left and, and uh, went to St. Louis, as he said. Um, that was with Kerry Collins that year. Um, 2008. That's right, 2008. And uh, that's the last time they were in the playoffs. Um, and believe me, I get it. Uh, we want these guys to win just like you do. Um, we cover these guys, and it's a whole lot more fun when they're winning. Sure. But I'll argue with David on one thing, and he just made the point for me. He said things hadn't been right since Steve McNair wasn't here, and that's the key, a franchise quarterback. And they have that in Marcus Mariota. There's no doubt this kid is the answer. Uh, you're talking about a guy – that is 175 passing yards away from setting the rookie franchise passing record set by Vince Young in 2006. And there's six games left to play. He has a 96 passer rating. And he's missed two games. He has 13 passing touchdowns. He has, I think, five or six interceptions. He's missed two games. He can run like a deer. Um, if they can get the line in order, people are going to be very excited at what they see with this young man. He's the salt of the earth off the field and a field general on it. He's a quiet leader and leads by example. He has the ultimate command and respect in that locker room, and that's what is going to separate these guys. They've got to put the other pieces of the, the puzzle together. I agree with David on that part, but they have a franchise quarterback now. 615-737-7767, our number. You can join us next here on Titans Talk.